Hey everybody, it's Lady Kayla here and welcome to the Geekdom. Today I am going to restart my Game of Thrones reviews that I kind of stopped doing last year. Um, so explaining that, and I explained it in a video before, but just in case you haven't been around or if you forgot, um, last April my brother passed away and I wanted to do the reviews to kind of have a hobby or something to do during that time of my life, but it just got really hard for me and I just couldn't deal with it and I kind of, because I kind of tried to force it to happen, um, I associated Game of Thrones with that time of my life and I just didn't even watch it even for pleasure and I certainly didn't review it, so um, that's why I just did not do it, so uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> that's what happened. And so I'm going to try again, um, it's been a year now. And I really do love A Song of Ice and Fire, and I want to see what happens in Game of Thrones, and I definitely want to review it for you guys. Um, I do occasionally do a book show comparison, because I have read the books, but it's been about seven years, with the exception of Dance of Dragons, but it's been about seven years since I've read the books, and um, it, just details get a little fuzzy, because I took like that year break from all of it, I kind of just have names don't really register, details are a little bit questionable, and so I'm not on top of my game. I need to reread. I have a lot of new uh, materials that I haven't read at all, like The World of Ice and Fire and the Hedge Knight graphic novels, so I will try to get back into it for you guys. Um, uh, if you don't know how I review, I used to go over every detail and I used to go in like, I think I used to go by point of view, and um, now I kind of just, you guys have watched the episode, I don't have to go every sing over every single detail with you guys, so I'm just going to pull out what I thought was important or what I want to go over, and then we can discuss it in the comments below, and if you thought I forgot anything important, we can discuss that as well. Um, if you find that, that there are any discussion topics that you might want me to cover, just go ahead and drop suggestions um, and we can do all that. So this is going to be my review of episode 2 because I did manage to do the episode 1 review of season 4 last year. I just didn't get to continue because I simply just couldn't. And um, so we have episode 2, The Lion and the Rose. And I'm actually going to start with Bran, because Bran, we just, we get this super cool, like, thing that we figure out can happen in this world where we thought, oh, there's no real, there's not really any magic, and then we find out Bran can warg, and we're like, that's cool, but then he starts to, like, flounder, and he has to run away, and we're just like, oh my god, where, what's going to happen with all this, so... In this episode, he actually gets a little direction, and he can start his adventure towards whatever it is that's calling him, and maybe he will have a more magical role to play, and we can see where all that leads, because obviously Bran has some kind of mystical importance about him. So I'm glad that we're finally getting him to get in some sort of direction rather than just following characters that are floundering, which happens a lot in the show. Um, so anyway, next I'm going to just go over Stannis briefly because most of that's self-explanatory. <coughs> I'm suffering like either a cold or really bad allergies. I'm not quite sure at this point. So, or maybe it's both. Um, so I just feel horrible. Sorry if I look horrible. Um, and that's just if I cough or if I like sniffle, that's what's going on. So, um, sorry. Um, but with Stannis, we have a lot of like this religious extremism going on, which I think I just, I love it. Um, because it just, although Martin gives the religions a lot of power, for instance, Melisandre has like a lot of like mystical powers, which could be attributed to like the land has magic, or it could be attributed to to as proof that these religions have weight and that these gods exist we don't know we don't know what martin's exactly trying to say but he also criticizes religion a lot for instance melisandre has the ability to see who truly believes in her god and who doesn't she knows 
she obviously has that kind of ability or power or whatever, but she doesn't call Stannis out on it. Stannis clearly is not a true believer. He's only in it because Melisandre has proved her worth. And yet Melisandre, like, refuses to see that about him because she believes he is part of her prophecy. And it just, it's hilarious. So, um, anyway. Uh, and then next is his daughter. And I forgot her name. I'm, I'm, I want to say a name, but I'm just going to spare myself the embarrassment and just call her his daughter. <laughs> And, um, she just gets brought up a lot and she's very smart. She's very inquisitive and, um, she doesn't at all seem to like fear Melisandre and it's just like, I think she's going to have a really important role. I honestly want to say that she doesn't in the books, like not overly so. She does have an important role. Martin doesn't just add characters for no reason and give them bits of storyline, um, <laughs> if they're not important, but, um, so far, like, nothing tremendous has happened, and I just want to, I just, I, I just want to know what's there, like, what is, what's going to happen, like, is the show going to make it greater than it did in the books, or what's going on, I don't know. Refresh my memory if I'm a little off on that one, because I will admit to knowing or remembering nothing about that. <laughs> um, so, uh, next, I'm kind of just kind of get into, um, the wedding. I like Oberyn Martell. I think most of us, like, just do, like, he's anti-Lannister. He's so anti-Lannister and just talks trash to Cersei and, um, even Tywin and, like, justifiably so. Like, these are the people responsible for the death of, um, their family members. And so it's just, like, and they never got any justice for it either. Like, everyone got away with that. So, I just, I love it because it's just like, it's not like they're just being resentful for no reason. They bring up a lot of good points, whereas Cersei just kind of brings up, like, just those cultural differences that are kind of just, like, racist <laughs> um, and um, classist as well. So, um, it's just, it's amazing. I, I love the Dornish. I love how they, they have, they have, like, a respect for their bastards. They don't put bastards in, like, a separate, like, place. They, they have respect for people as people, and their, uh, sexualities are a little bit more open, and, um, it's just, it's great. I love it. Um, they're definitely a lot more progressive. Um, so, um, let's see. Um, I like Joffrey in this last portrayal of him because he is so, um, he starts off as, like, really charming before he starts to get, let his crazy side out, but I like that. Like, I like those layers to him because he was able to fool Sansa for a while. Like, he was really charming. He played the prince part perfectly, and, um, I feel like they should have shown that a lot more throughout the show. It just would have made him more interesting of a character when he has, like, these different fronts and these different layers rather than just, like, bam, Joffrey's crazy. It's like, oh, okay, we get it. Like, give him a little bit more. Just, just, I don't know. It wouldn't be that hard. Obviously, they did in this episode. And then next was, like, I noticed, like, Loras, was he making, like, flirty eyes with Oberyn and were they, like, having a little exchange? Like, that, that, that was cute. I noticed that. That was cute. But, um, Anyways, um, with Loras comes this, like, tiff with Jamie, and I love Jamie because of his redemption arc, like, that was a really great redemption arc, like, that's how you do it, and it's just kind of annoying to see a tiff with Loras, even though it's kind of understandable, because Loras is kind of Jamie when Jamie was younger. Jamie was this young, dashing, really talented, um, swordsman, and, you know, that's Loris now. And especially now that Jamie's lost a hand, that makes Loris even more so, <laughs> um, the dashing, charming, skilled swordsman. So, I can see why there's a little tiff, but I think it also kind of takes away from Jamie's redemption arc. So, and there's also Loris is going to marry Cersei, and Jamie's in love with Cersei, but it's just, I don't know. I don't really care for the tiff, but they wanted to add it, so. Um, so what happens next? 
Oh, I also wanted to note that when Joffrey gets married to uh, Sansa, uh, not Sansa, sorry, when she gets married to uh, Marjorie, Sansa, sorry, I just exchanged the names because I wanted to talk about Sansa, but um, Sansa makes this note, like, we have a new queen, like, I roll, and it's just like, whoa, like, that's interesting, because Sansa was in that abusive relationship with Joffrey, and we know she doesn't want to be there, but it's just like, it adds a little bit more to her character because it's just like, was that resentment? Like, was that jealousy? Like, what was that? Like, that was interesting. Like, I don't think she wants Joffrey, but I think she really wanted that role. Like, that was going to be her place. That was going to be her life. And so while I don't think she wants Joffrey and she doesn't want the abuse that she had, she did have a dream. And her dream obviously didn't include the abuse and whatnot. So what she wants is what... I guess what Marjorie has, because Joffrey isn't abusive to Marjorie, probably will be in the future, well, will be, <laughs> because um, the end of this um, episode isn't too nice for Joffrey. Um, and then also at the wedding, we have Cersei just taking out her, like, her, like, decline from power um, out on just everyone. <laughs> And it's just, it's sad. And I think that's why Oberyn, like, constantly makes snide remarks, like, former Queen Regent, like, because he's, he's in, he knows how much she cares about her power, and the fact that she's losing any of it is driving her absolutely insane. Um, and we see that in the fact that she, like, tells Master, or sorry, Maester Pycelle to give the scraps to the dogs because it's just like you're not making Marjorie look bad like Marjorie did that in your son's name you're making your son look bad so it's just like are you really that like crazy that you're going to make your son look bad because Marjorie is better at queening than you are obviously um so it's just uh anyway um that's I think all I want to talk about the wedding and then we get the ending where it, the the wedding gets the name Purple Wedding because Joffrey dies and he dies by a poison that um, I think just, I forget what it does, but I think it just cut off, cuts off the airflow and so your face gets kind of purple. I forget what the poison was called and everything. Um, I do, I do have it on, like, my brain, but I don't want to say it out loud because just in case I'm wrong, like, I don't want to, I just want to spare myself that. <laughs> um, so, uh, anyways, in this scene, everyone's probably cheering and applauding, and I'm just over here, like, crying, like, Cersei is losing her son, like, and you get to watch Cersei lose her son, and even though Cersei is, like, a terrible human being, like, I don't, like, nobody deserves that. Like, even though Joffrey's a horrible human being, Cersei's a horrible human being, and I would have liked to see Joffrey dead and everything, just the fact that Cersei's watching her son die. And, like, that's one of Cersei's only redeeming qualities is her love for her children. And so she's watching her son die, and it just, it's, it brings me to tears each time. And I watched this episode three times because... I'm trying to get back into doing these reviews, and so sorry if this review is so scatterbrained and so off, but, um, yeah, um, that was my response to his death. I'm glad he's gone, but at the same time, my heart just went out to Cersei, so it was, it was pretty, I don't know, I, 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 you, if you look in my videos, you see I have, like, a sort of a commentary on Cersei as a character, and I'm a little sympathetic towards her, but, um, you could go check that out on your own time, and, um, uh, that's just gonna be my episode for this, or my episode review for this, um, episode. Sorry. I'm a little, I'm a little off, and the more I talk, the more, um, just my brain isn't because of this allergies and cold that's going on. So, um, I'm so sorry that this episode review is a little bit off, but, um, hopefully as I continue, I get a little bit better. Um, and, um, so until then, um, I'll get to you guys later for my next review. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I'm so off.
Bye. Thank you.